What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo here, and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to possess and unpossess, that is get in and get out of a vehicle in Unreal Engine 5. So if I go over here and I press E, I have now possessed this vehicle, and if I stop and press E again, I'm going to exit the vehicle and repossess my third person character like so. So without further ado guys, let me show you how to do this. Alrighty guys, as you can see here, I've created a new project using the third person template. And the first thing I'm going to do is go down here to the content browser and click add, add feature content or pack and add the vehicle pack right here at the project. You'll see that a few new folders have been added down here so you can close this. And this will probably tell you that you are missing the chaos vehicles plugin. So you can click enable and then it should also prompt you to restart the editor and you can hit restart. If it did not prompt you to enable that plugin and restart the editor, just go to settings and project settings, uh, sorry, uh, plugins and search for chaos and make sure you enable this chaos vehicles plugin and restart the editor if required. Alrighty, so uh, we're just going to use the sports car today. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the sports car pawn blueprint and just drop that into the level like so. Now I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. I'm going to show you uh, how to possess the vehicle when you overlap it and press E. And I'm also going to show you a line trace interaction. So let's do the overlapping first. The very first thing I want to do is open up the sports car pawn and go to the viewport. And I'm going to add a collision box that we can overlap with here. So I can add a uh, box collision. And I'm just going to leave it called box. I'm going to scale this up so that basically it surrounds the whole vehicle. Um, if you want to just be able to get in from the sides, you could do this. Um, I'm just going to have it nice and big, like so. Okay, the next thing I want to do is create a blueprint interface. So I'm just going to create it here in the content folder. If you want to be more organized, you can do that. But I'm just going to right click and go to blueprint, blueprint interface, and call this BPI underscore interact. And... I'm just going to rename this function interact and we may not even use this function um, but this is just a good way of filtering uh, you know what you can and can't interact with so we can check uh, does does the car implement the interface interact and then uh, and then we can interact with it nice so let's also open our third person character and actually, before I forget, go into the sports car pawn, go to class settings and add an interface in the details panel over here, the BPI interact and hit compile. And I'm just going to put this on the E key. If you want to set up an enhanced input, you should absolutely do so if this is going to be part of your game but I'm not going to show you how to do that in this tutorial. I'm just going to do it on E like so. So let's first get overlapping actors and let's uh, filter this by the sports car pawn class. Get a copy. And then let's check does implement interface. Plug this into the test object and get your BPI interact. Put this on a branch. Plug this in. And now this is a very nice and easy way to just check when we press E. It's going to get overlapping actors of the type sports car pawn, the first copy, the first overlapping actor. And check does it implement uh, the interface BPI interact. And if it does, we can cast to the sports car pawn and get player controller 
and off of get player controller we can possess and the in pawn will be the sports car pawn like so but now that we've possessed the sports car we also want to hide our character so what we can do is just uh, set actor hidden in game with new hidden checked and we also want to turn off collision for the capsule component and for the mesh so we can set collision enabled plug both of these in no collision and that should be that we're possessing we're getting the overlapping actors cast in the sports car possessing it hiding our player character and switching off the collision um, but we also want to set the input mapping context on the sports car when we possess it so there's a very handy node called event possessed and event unpossessed and these will fire off whenever this uh blue this um pawn is possessed so we can also get player character uh sorry controller and the enhanced input local player subsystem and off of a event possessed we can add the mapping context this one the one that says message add mapping context message plug in the player subsystem into the target and to make this foolproof because as you'll see here both of these in input mapping contexts are named identically what you want to do is go to the vehicle template folder and input and select the IMC default and then go here and click this little arrow use asset browser selection and you can always browse to it to check that you've selected the right one there which we have we also, off of event unpossessed, want to remove mapping context message. Plug this into the target. Select the IMC and browse to it again, just to double check. And we also want to do the same thing with our character when we get out of the sports car. But uh, first, let's just double check that all of this is working. So make sure these are all compiled. And now if we overlap here and press E, we've possessed the vehicle. And we have the input mapping context added. Very nice. Now let's do exiting the vehicle as well. And I am also just going to put this on the E key. So let's find the E key. And we can just get actor of class. Filter for our third person character. And we need to move the character to somewhere we don't want to just repossess it you know wherever we got into the car we drove somewhere and now we're kind of getting out so we need a transform to um to move the character to and probably the easiest way to do this is just to add a socket or some sort of component um, like you can add an arrow component add an arrow it's going to leave it called arrow and just move it out to the side here and that is a good height i'd say i'm just going to move it up by not even 10 just five units like so and we can use the transform of this arrow so go back to the event graph grab your arrow and get world transform and let's uh set the actor rotation uh oh sorry i got get all actors of class here um we only just need to get actor of class not all actors get actor of class my bad third person character and let's set actor transform so this one here and the transform will be the transform of our arrow and we can just teleport 
Um, this basically just, it doesn't simulate physics. It just sort of appears. Um, it doesn't move. It just disappears and appears in the new uh, transform. We can also set actor hidden in game. We want to make our character visible again with new hidden unchecked. And I'm just going to make some reroute nodes to try and keep this neat. We also want to uh, get the capsule component. Get capsule component. Might be all the way down the bottom. Get capsule component. Set collision enabled. This one is going to be collision enabled query and physics. And we also want to get the mesh. And we can duplicate this one. Plug this in. But the mesh will be query only. Like so. No physics collision. And then we can possess. So we can get player controller. And possess. The in pawn will be this one. Nice. So that's pretty much everything. We're moving the character to where the arrow is next to the door. We are unhiding the character and enabling collision on the capsule component and the mesh and possessing it. Um, but we also need to add the mapping contexts. So what we can do is just control C all of this here, paste it into our third person character, and then change the mapping context here to the one that is in the third person inputs folder, IMC default, um, and just use asset browser selection. And let's just browse to that to double check that we've selected the right one here. And we have. Nice. Okay. So I walk over here, press E, I've possessed it. If I press E again, my character is spawned next to the vehicle and I have control of it. Very nice. I can get in and out of this vehicle as I please. This is all working very well. Okay, good. The last thing I wanna show you guys is just using a line trace interact instead of a box collision. So this is very simple. Basically, when we press E, we want to uh, draw a line trace and then do the same checks as, um, as we've done here. So check if it... Uh, if it implements BPI interact, and if it does, then we can, um, you know, we can possess it. So off E, what we can do is line trace by channel. And the start position, I'm just gonna use the capsule component. So I get the capsule components uh, world location. Get world location, plug this into the start point like so. And now let's make it just draw um, say five meters in the direction that we're looking. So for this, you can uh, get the camera manager, get player camera manager. Um, and if we get world transform, transform component, that's odd. Transform component. Might just uh, get the root component. That will work get the root component get world transform and we can split this struct pin and off of rotation get forward vector multiply the forward vector by a float right click here convert it to float single precision just make this 500 for five meters like so and then we want to add that to the location of the capsule component and plug that into the end point here. Let's change the draw debug type to for duration so that we can see what's going on. And 
if we hit something, so drag off of this return hit and make a branch, we want to break hit result on the out hit. Sorry, this is getting a little bit cluttered here. And basically, we can get rid of this overlapping actors stuff if this is the way that we want to do it. Um, we just want to check does does implement this interface. So you can plug hit actor into the test object here and true into the execution pin right here. And then everything else should be pretty much exactly the same. Um, but obviously we need an object to cast to and the object will be this hit actor. So let's just put this down here, under here. Nice, and that should be absolutely everything. If I hit play here and I just press E to check that my line trace is working, and it is, if I am within five meters of that car and I line trace to it, I will possess it. So here, whoop, <laughs> it's reversing. Um, so yeah, nice. If I look at it, boom, I have possessed it. Guys, if this tutorial has been of any use or value to you whatsoever, please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.